Do you guys remember last episode when I had said that we had discovered everything there was to discover in Taka Pass? Well, I lied. Now we've discovered everything there was to discover in Taka Pass. So, with that out of the way, now we can go to the next area of the game. Or rather, a new area. Not exactly... Well, I guess it is the next. Um, just as an update for my condition, for my illness, I am still sick. I do not want to harp on it like I did last episode. I felt like I, uh, I dwelled on my illness a little bit too much, and I found it distracting in post. Um, I, I guess you guys probably did it as well. So I apologize for that. So I'll just give you a quick update on my illness, and then we'll get on with the rest of the video. So, um, I have two ear infections. The doctor diagnosed me with two ear infections, one in both ear, both ears, and um, so I have pretty much uh, 20% hearing total. Yeah, that's that's not fun. And then I also have all of the symptoms of tonsillitis, or if not all, at, at least most. So uh, yeah, and then I no longer have pink eye. That that's a good thing. That's very good. I do not have pink eye, so my eyes are not bothering me in the slightest. So I only have two conditions right now that I'm working through, but I'm on medication, so those should be um, those should be gone within a week or so, hopefully. Lord willing, hopefully. Okay, uh, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and leave Taka Pass and go to the new area. City Checkpoint. Here we are. Uh, right here is a tea shack, so let's go ahead and talk to the proprietor of that tea shack, who is Mrs. Pine. Yeah, you guys can probably already tell the naming scheme in this game. We've had Mr. Orange, uh, Mr. Bamboo, and now Mrs. Pine. So they really like naming elderly characters after plants. It's very strange. What weird obs obsessions th this ga these designers had. Oh, what a cute little doggy. Are you stuck here too? Yeah. That big bridge over there? People call it the Big Draw Bridge. Very appropriate name. It's what links Taka Pass with the city. As you can see, they keep the bridge raised these days, though. I wonder what's going on over in the city. Uh, I don't know. What do you have to say next? There would be more customers if the big drawbridge was back to normal. I can barely make ends, m make ends meet the way things are right now. I've been running this place by myself since my husband died. But maybe my tea serving days are over. That's, that's quite sad. Well, we'll try and help you if we can, though I doubt we will. Okay, tea customer. Hey there, Pooch. You hoping to head over to the city, too? I'm afraid no one's going anywhere with that, with the big drawbridge like that. Even the checkpoint guards don't know why it's been raised. I bet there's something a bit fishy going on. Hey, you understand what I'm saying, eh? Want me to let you in on a rumor I heard? Apparently, there's some mysterious illness in Seon City. I wouldn't normally believe that kind of rumor, of course. But thinking about it when I first heard it... Well, it was right around the time the bridge was raised. If the rumor's true, then I guess there's no hurry to leave here. Okay, so it seems like they're trying to quarantine uh, Seon City, which is the name of the capital. We didn't know that before, but we do now. They're trying to quarantine that area off because of some illness. That's very interesting. Also, in this area, you're going to notice that whenever there are trees to be bloomed, uh, in the next area, I believe, as well, they're going to have a new sprite. The sprite was updated or changed from the uh, Shinshu, Shinshu province to this province. So before, they had they, the trees looked more like cherry trees. Now, they're actually still cherry trees, but they're a little bit curvier and... Uh, I don't know, a little bit more um, sloped and elegant, I guess you could say. Also, these are sprites. I just wanted to to tell you guys that, um, make sure that was clear. These are sprites. It just they're set at different angles, so there's a little bit of depth to it. But they are sprites. If I were able to uh, hack Okami in order to be right 
have the camera face the tree from the side, you would be able to pretty much see straight through it since it's paper thin. It just constantly faces the camera. Same with uh, these trees as well. However, the grass is a little bit different though. That is, I mean, it's so, not really a model, but it's a bunch of uh, flat, flat projections laid at different angles. So it doesn't turn to face the camera. I, I'm getting too technical here. Uh, behind the shop is a buried treasure, so you want to go ahead and dig that up before going to the shop, since presumably you probably want to sell your treasure. Uh, and it's bullhorn, which I believe are 3,000 yen. So let's go ahead and talk to this merchant. Oh, what a pain. Now that the big drawbridge has been raised, I can't get home. I hear Queen Himiko, that's also a new name that we haven't heard before, Himiko, had issued an order to close off the city. But why would you give orders like that with so little warning? I suppose I'll just have to sell my goods here for now. You haven't been sent to do the shopping, have you? Do some shopping? Uh, no. I'm going to hold off on selling my goods because he has nothing new for us. He's just basically an area to restock your supplies. He d has nothing new at all. Also, I just realized that we have 500... 55, uh, 5,555 5, yen. Cool. Quadruple five. Okay, let's go ahead and talk to this sleepy guard first, I guess. We could. Who, what? Oh, uh, uh -huh. this is the checkpoint for Seon City. This big drawbridge is the only way in or out. But no one is allowed into the city right now. That's an absolute order from Queen Himiko. Say, you know the Phoenix statues that protect this, this checkpoint? Well, they burned the sacred flames that drove away evil. However, they've been out until recently. The sacred flames should never go out. Maybe that rumor is true. You've heard that rumor, haven't you? Have you heard that rumor? Not any rumor. That rumor. Uh, no. Go ahead, tell me. You haven't heard the rumor about the huge curse zone? Everyone's up in arms because it happened so close to the big day. By big day, I mean the Kamiki Festival held each year. Plus, it was the 100th festival since that monster was defeated. So everyone's saying it's the 100-year curse. Of course, I was the first one to start spreading that rumor. <laughs> so I guess everyone's not saying it, just him. Who? What? Oh, uh, the curse zone is gone and peace has returned. What's more, the sacred flames returned to the phoenix statues. Now I won't have to worry about the monsters sneaking up at night. Anyway, ha you've heard that rumor, haven't you? K have you heard that rumor? Uh, k duh, a million times. Who hasn't? I see. And by a million times, I mean <clears throat> just one. I see. Guess I can't remember who I've told it to. I've told so many. Okay, let's talk to this guy. This guy actually has a name. I'm not, I actually didn't pay attention. Actually, no, the other guy does not have a name. This guy does, though. So he must be important in some way. Uh, let's see. What's a good voice for him? Uh, I don't know. I'll, if, he, if he's important and he gets an introduction, then I'll give him a voice. Hello there. What's the matter, Poochie? Why the sad look? Actually, no. I thought it was the perfect voice. You'll never get anywhere looking like that. It's bad luck. I am Yoichi. The greatest archer among all the city guards. The greatest archer, Yoichi. I think the best voice for him is that of like a weatherman voice. Holy smokes, that's some bow you got there, mister. What's this? You brought a friend along with you, Poochie. This is my trusty bow, Golden Fire. The most powerful in all of the land. Guarding is rather dull work, so I pass the time practicing archery. I'll show you what I can do. Watch this. Chicka pow! Shoo uh, I, I I felt like I felt called to do that one um, those sound effects. Uh, just something I have to do. Wow, bullseye! Pretty good, eh? There's not a target gold enough golden fire and I cannot hit. Now, my friends, why not have a bite to eat and relax a bit? I really love my voice for him. All of my voices, I'm really happy about doing. Like, I, f I find them incredibly fun. It's probably 
It's probably one of my favorite aspects of um, of Let's Playing are the voices. That and just some of the funny moments. Also, I, I really love glitches. <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you guys all this, but I just feel like I should do an uh, episode of Show and Tell and just tell you guys everything I like about <laughs> Let's Playing. Okay, what a mother tree. I wonder what that scroll... I really don't really care about reading the scrolls, but that one, I don't know what it's about. It says Mother Tree, which is interesting to me, since I have no idea what Mother Tree is. Usually, when you get a scroll, it's pertaining to something that you just learned. For example, um, that one could say, like, Seon City, and you could learn all about Seon City, or the checkpoint, or something like that. But, Mother Tree. Huh. I might have to check that out. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'll do it in, in the episode, or... Uh, after. I don't know. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and run down this beach, because, uh, it's there. We could talk to Yoichi again and do what the story or the game wants us to do. However, I find it much more conducive to go down this beach and grab some of the collectibles that are available to us while we can. For example, this burning chest. You can use Water Spout or Gale Storm. I prefer using Gale Storm, just because you don't always have water available to you, and you can... Douse the flames on the chest and collect a stray bead. Next, all the way up here, or not all the way, but right over here, next to these raccoons, which I'll feed on the way back, is another chest which contains an exorcism slabes. And if we turn it into nighttime, which I would want to do, uh, something I learned. Also, voice crack much. Something I learned. Uh, uh, something I learned is whenever you're using crescent moon on the sky, do not use it when there is a swirl of wind right there. Because, for some reason, it just doesn't work. Look, I'll show you. See? It does not work. Even when it's gone, it does not work because the swirl is there. I don't know why this is. I mean, drawing Gale Storm. <laughs> okay. That was clearly not Sunrise, but as I was saying, drawing Gale Storm does nothing to that swirl, however, it actually counts as you drawing um, the crescent on something that's not the sky. So what you want to do is go into first person, aka first wolf view, and find a part of the sky that is not swirlied, like right here. There's Kotohana Bud right there, or Blossom, so I just want to do that next to it. There we go, and first try on something that's not swirly is the charm, and it will turn it into nighttime with no trouble. In a previous take of this episode, I had actually, um, I had done like 14 tries, uh, on, with using Crescent, and I learned that the reason why it wasn't working was because I was drawing it on a swirl. So anyway, up here, near the end of the beach, is, or are, rather, a couple buried things. Game, don't make a liar out of me. There we go. Uh, the first one is a chest, which contains yet another... Come on. Stray bead. And next one, you guys can probably tell, is a clover, because whenever you find a clover, the spotlight on it is always green. It is never white. Also, it's bigger than the spotlight of that of a chest. I wonder if there's a an official name for those spotlights. I don't think the game... Does the game ever tell you uh, that uh, looking for buried chest at night is easier? I don't think it does. So, I wonder if there's an official name for those spotlights. Certainly there is. Also, I said I was going to feed those animals. Certainly there is. Certainly the designers called that thing something. I don't know. Okay, let me go and feed these animals. And, I don't know. I guess I'll meet you back at the beginning of the beach since there's nothing else here for us on this shore. I mean, I suppose you could jump in those boats, but it really doesn't do any, you any good. Actually, before I feed those things, something I should point out is there is actually current here. <laughs> Game. Is there... Yeah, there is. There is a current here. It, it's very slight. Oh, I'm about to drown. It's very slight, but there is one. It's it's stronger up upriver, though. Just so you know. Okay, let me go and feed these and meet you back up at the top of the bridge. Alrighty, here we are. Uh, there are two two clusters of animals down there. There are the raccoons, and then there's some boars, which I'm not sure if I had shown you guys, or if I uh, 
ended up running close close enough to them that they'd spawn, but just keep running next to that wall and you'll see them. Okay. With this out of the way, I actually would like it to be night in this area because I find it much more atmospheric. So let me go and fix that. Fix that. K fix that. Come on, game. Fix it. Fix it, Felix. Finally, thank you. Thank you, Fix It Felix, for listening to me and patching this game's code. I don't know, it's strange. Uh, Crescent Moon seems to be very unresponsive at times, even when I'm drawing on nothing. Uh, it's just something that is kind of a... Not not a pet peeve of mine, because I don't really use it often enough for it to become a big issue, but it's just something I've noticed. Of course, I've heard a lot of people complain that Bloom does not work that much, but for me, I hardly ever have trouble with bloom. I mean, it's really not that hard if you take your time and have a steady hand. Look, the sacred flames of the phoenix statues burn once more. But I don't think you, you'd know what that meant, Poochie. Go talk to that heavyset partner of mine over there for details. Suffice it to say, I'm <laughs> sorry, the statue's flame should never go out. However, they've been out until recently. Then, on the night when that moon suddenly rose, I heard a roar from Shinshu Field and the flames suddenly lit up again. Why do they keep going out and back on? Is it some ill omen? At any rate, now I can give the sign by firing a flaming arrow. That's the sign to lower the big drawbridge on the far flank. I was guarding the city checkpoint when suddenly the order was given to close the city. They raised the drawbridge before I even had time to get back in but I can shoot a flaming arrow to signal them to lower it again. Now that the phoenix statues are- flames are back. Still. I have nothing to look forward to back in the city. I mean, I'm not cut out to be a city guard. I really want to be an adventurer and do magnificent things. I don't know if you guys find that voice annoying, but I find it quite enjoyable. I could fire a flaming arrow to signal them to lower the bridge, but then I have nothing to look forward to back in the city. Oh, he says everything. Okay. A flaming arrow, huh? So, all we gotta do is light an arrow. Looks like it's time for that new brush technique of yours, Ami. If you didn't guess already, there's a reason why this fire is here. Also, one thing I really should point out, uh, some of, you, some of my more eagle-eyed viewers have probably seen this, of course. If you didn't, don't worry. It's not something that I would have looked for. It's not something I noticed. Uh, if you remember, at the end of episode 20... What was it? 29? Yeah, 29. Uh, we had a cutscene that showed Waka talking to someone. Or rather, someone talking to Waka. And in the background of Waka were some flaming phoenix statues and an upright bridge. So Waka was standing right about here. Actually, no, it would have been more like... He would have been standing right here. Right on that rock. Yeah. So, yeah. Waka passed through here. We can only assume that he headed that direction. Alright. Let's go ahead and light that arrow. He has to eat an orange. Come on, buddy. Shoot the arrow. Let's get down to business. To defeat the hunt. Sorry. <laughs> Flaming arrows got me in a very Mulan mood. Not to sound, like, incredibly obvious, like any Nintendo character in the world, but that didn't look good. <laughs> uh, that was certainly not the, the way I wanted to signal them to lower the bridge, by killing everyone on the other side of the river. What in the world? This is terrible. Nothing like this has ever happened before. My arrow suddenly burst into flames. Oh no. I just remembered I have business to attend to back in the city. Well, seeing how the bridge is back down and all, I better get back to my guarding job in the city. 
I'm not just saying that only to disappear in some adventure. Yoichi, the greatest archer, would never dream of such an act. Well, goodbye and good luck. Also, there's something to be learned about this entire experience. Fifteen minutes. Could you save, save you 15% more on city checkpoint insurance for fires and flaming arrow accidents that happen all the time? <laughs> uh, that's really that what that voice is. It's really the Geico salesman dude where he's like, Could switching to Geico really save you 15% or more on car insurance? Did a, could a former drill sergeant make a terrible therapist? That's pretty much all that voice is. Uh, okay, um, on this area, it seems like maybe it wasn't all bad, that there were no casualties, because there were curse zones throughout this area, though we couldn't really see it before. So, it seems as if maybe everyone here had moved on. Not, like, d dead moved on, but they had... Uh, left this area because of the illness, which it could make sense that a curse zone would be an illness. So while I go ahead and use bloom on these, I'd like to explain something that I'd posted in the comments of last video, uh, which was two days ago, uh, like four days ago. It was Tuesday, I believe, and this episode should be coming out on Saturday unless there's some sort of altercation in my illness that prevents me from editing this or some recording error, which is commonplace with my recordings. Um, so I want to explain what I mentioned in that this channel is now entering loose mode. Uh, for, the, for those of you who have been around my channel for a long time, and many of you who I have spirited away from other channels that I comment on, yeah, I, I don't advertise my channel on other, on other channels, but I do comment on other channels, which leads people to check out my channel, so I kind of I kind of share a, bu a couple uh, fan bases, so, like, I kind of leech off other... Anyway, I don't want to sound... make myself sound like I'm shamelessly advertising, because that's not what I'm doing. Anyway, uh, loose mode. <laughs> Back to the subject that I started on. Loose mode. Uh, basically, loose mode means that since I'm sick, I will be recording, editing, and uploading videos whenever I am well enough to do so. Um, but if, I, uh, if I'm not well enough to do so, the schedule may be a little bit strange. For example, I may release an episode on Tuesday, which is actually the case this week, which actually is a great example. I may release an episode Tuesday, but not Thursday because my illness progresses to a point where I can't record or I can't edit. Um, and then by Friday, which is ex exactly the case of this week, I w am able to record enough where I can, or a I'm well enough so that I can record. Just trying to get that out of my mouth. So yeah, my I, I will release episodes on Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday, but it may not be every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday until I am better. Um, once I'm better, and I can record consistently, uh, by all means, I will follow my schedule to the letter once again, um, because before this, I had followed it to the letter. I had, I don't think I'd missed a day except for maybe twice, once just because I had my days mixed up because it was summer, and maybe another time very early on in my channel's history. So anyway, uh, let me go ahead and feed these animals, and then I will show you uh, two more collectibles that we need to grab. So hopefully my explanation of loose mode didn't leave you in the dust, but uh, it, I, it's kind of... I'm also, I'm really stuttering right now. Oh my word, I need to stop. Paladin, stop stuttering. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I'm kind of copying this off of one of my favorite channels, um, Steven Plays. Once again, that's no big shock, you know, it's not something like, oh, he's, he's favoriting channels, you know. No, <laughs> I've had Steven Plays on my channel, in my channel, um homepage since the beginning. He helped me during some of my stuff, so it's no surprise that my favorite channel is Steven Plays, one of them. Um, but anyway, it's kind of copying Steven Plays, because he did the same thing once when he was sick, maybe a couple more times. So, yeah, I'm shamelessly copying other people. Just like a lot of my style, I kind of copy multiple people. So anyway, back to the game, like I said at the beginning of 
this episode. I don't like harping, harping on my illness or on things that are happening in current time because it makes it confusing for people watching in the future. So anyway, back to the game. We have a stray bead. Um, after you use Bloom on all of the mini curse zones on this side of the, the river, there will be a buried chest right here next to this rock. I mean, really specific directions. And it's right here on the map. So let's go ahead and dig it up. And grab the Ugin, which is not even a word. <laughs> Ugi Ugin, I don't think is a word either, so... Uh, coinage, bro. Okay, anyway, um, we have one more collectible to, to harvest, I guess, in this video. And it's downriver. However, we're not going to be walking. Well, walking over there, more specifically. We're going to be flying. You're probably thinking, wow, do you have a fever? No, I don't. Uh, if you look up, you'll see that there is a Konohana blossom up there, which we can use vine on. So I'd like to count these uh, so you guys know how many there are. Well, no, duh. There are a lot, so that's two. So you really need to be prepared ink-wise. I will have to use an infinity stone for this. This is three. This requires a ton of ink, so I'm going to be putting this on the bio when we get the collectible. Let's see, the next one is down there. This is one of the longest blossom trains in the game. This this is a very long series of blossoms. I, I lost count. Uh, let's see, we've used... Snap. Uh, wait, just a second. Just a second, I have an idea. Okay, I'll use this. And I've done, I've done eight thus far. Um, I know that because let me go ahead and use my Infinity Stone. I know that because I had. What am I trying to say? Wow, I I can't, I went under a major voice block. And wow, I'm still going through it. Okay, any what I was saying is I've used seven ink pots, all my ink pots, but one of them had regenerated in that time, so I used eight. So. This is nine. Man, I could not talk right there. Hope that never happens again in my life. Uh, this is ten. Okay, and this is eleven. And this is twelve right there. Thirteen. There we go. And fourteen. Oh my word. Fourteen. And hopefully one last... There it is, okay. And the last one, which makes the total 15. There we go. And I should really, real quick... Let me go and change it to nighttime so you can get the, the full experience. Once again, let me... Oh, okay, it worked. Good. So there we go. On top of this tower are a, cu a couple torches. What is this? Six. Yeah, six torches, and they are surrounding a chest which contains a stray bead. Now that I've overcome my, my voice block, my vocal block, uh, that's going to be it for this episode, except for one thing. We do not have enough time to head into the other area on the other side of the bridge. However, I will use the last couple minutes remaining this episode to explain glaives, because I don't want to put that off for too much longer and I feel like you guys are probably waiting for such an explanation so I will grant your wish. Glaives are a third tier weapon or they're the last class of weapon rather and unlike rosaries they don't deal combos. If you're looking for a weapon that builds up godhood this is not the one. Um, the three classes of weapons have you know very specialized traits for example the um, the rosaries do a ton of hits, which means that you rack up godhood very quickly. Um, but they do low damage per hit, so they're more of a combo weapon than anything. The um, the reflector is a balance of that. It does a good about a good amount of hits, and it has a good amount of combo potential. However, the glaive has very few amount of hits and does a lot of damage a ton of damage the damage output on glaives is insane you would not believe it let me go ahead and show you instead of telling you uh, once we enter this battle we can swing it just like normal however if we point the Wiimote up 
and then bring it down kind of suddenly. Then, oh, let me go and power slash those skulls. Okay, then you will do a charge attack, and you'll notice I accidentally did on the, that imp. When fully charged, it this with this glaive with um, Sumagami, it insta kills green imps. And let me go ahead and show it off here. It killed that guy. Okay. Let me go ahead and pursue the black imp, and you'll see how much damage it does. That's uncharged. Fully charged, that would deal about half the black imp's health. It is truly an insane weapon. So pretty much whenever you're running around, you can just charge it and then unleash that. And it's just amazing. I love glaives. They are my favorite class of weapon. I do not really like rosaries, uh, just because they tend to keep you in one place for a long time. So if you're trying to avoid an attack, you can't really interrupt them that well. Um, second place in my favorite list are definitely reflectors. But first place, glaives, man. Glaives. Well, actually, glaives and reflectors might be tied. However, I like glaives a tad bit more for their sub-potential. As a sub-weapon, they're about as they're about equal. So let me go ahead and enter a battle here. Uh, when you jump, or when you press Z rather, you will do a lunging attack with the glaive. Uh, not too good. I mean, it do, it's a multi-hit move. Also, you get down, sir. It's a multi-hit move, and I don't really like it. And if you do it in the air, you'll do a lunging attack from above, which I find to be much better. However, better still is its potential when used in a short hop. Just do a short hop, you'll pass right through it and hit the opposite wall. That is amazing. If you're dealing with a with an enemy that is really uh, it has a really high damage output, and once you hit it, it or once you get near it, it pretty much does a ton of your health, a uh, ton of damage to your health. Then you can just use this weapon and attack it and just pass right through it to the other side of the arena. It's amazing. I love their. I love the subglave. It's so good. So, with that out of the way, and with me equipping the with uh, sorry Sumagari back to my main, I still have that voice block. I think it's partially due to my my illness. Anyway, uh, that's going to be for the it, for this episode. Uh, next time, we're going to be heading across the bridge and past the city checkpoint into a new area. And I will see you then. I release new episodes of Akami Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. Saturdays are long episodes. And if you like this episode, comment. If you didn't like this episode, then comment and tell me how I could make next episode that, so that you would like it. So, see you guys next time. <coughs> wow. <coughs> wow, okay. You guys could probably tell I was holding back that cough for the last few minutes. <coughs>